at gtcc.edu. And I have Darlinda Finch and Chisa Penix Brown here with me this morning. So I asked before um, the break, you know, what are some of the benefits as opposed to having a job to owning your own business? I mean, you've already said, you know, what maybe the negatives could be. And it may not be a negative if you if you like doing it. But what are some of the positives for somebody out there who's thinking about making that jump? Well, I think one of the biggest positives, because now that I have had time to stew, as you say, um, <laughs> one of the biggest positives is your income. I do think that you have an ability to make more money per hour or you know per year than you probably would at your regular job. I think that um, for me being a contractor, it makes it a lot easier for me to set the rates that I want and to be able to say, you know, this is what I want per hour. And that's one of the questions that I ask everybody in all of the classes. How much do you want to make an hour? And I just think that's a simple thing to go with. But some people are like, I don't know. Let's just try. And I'm just like, that is not going to work. If you work a regular job now, you know how much you get paid per hour. So do you want your business to make what you make per hour so that this way you can kind of stay where you're at now? Or do you want to make more? And once you figure out how much you want to make per hour, then that's when you figure out how much you want to charge for your services and um, and how much money you need to put in in order to invest in order to get the clients and how much you need to charge them. It makes a big difference if you know how much you want. Um, I think education makes a big difference as well. So one of the biggest things is flexibility. So I mentioned time is you know kind of a negative, but then it's also a positive because it allows you to set your own hours. But then you need to be consistent with those hours as yes. well. Yes. So I think that it's a lot of self-management and accountability that um, can be a great thing to a person that definitely knows that this is something that they want to do every day. And to me, if I can wake up and I'm happy going to you know work for myself every day, that's to me is the biggest reward is just just being happy every day about what I'm doing and being able to help other people. I had to write down right here how much do you want to make per hour so I can go back and figure that out for myself. <laughs> Were you about to say something, Darlinda? Yep. Nope. Oh, okay. I thought I heard you get something, something. All right, so I'm going to figure that out. If you're listening, you got to figure that out, how much you want to make per hour. I guess you can break down how much you know your ideal year is, and then you can kind of break that down into into hours. Yeah, you can do it yearly, but I think the thing is, is it's easy for people to say, okay, I know how much I make per hour now. Yeah. Do I still want to stay at this? Because if you're working at your regular job right now and you want to leave, you have to replace that income. Right. So it's just like, don't just jump out there and then you're stuck like Chuck. You need to make sure mm -hmm. that you can either continue to maintain if you feel like you're comfortable where you're at now or grow from there. And that means you can't, you know, charge five dollars for your services, and it costs you three dollars in order to do it. And then you still have other supplies and things that you need, and you end up making a dollar. Like that can't happen. So this, okay, this brings me to this. This is okay. This is a real life <laughs> instance that happened to me just two days ago. Okay. And I was talking to you off mic about, you know, people asking me about something, a particular service. There's another service that. I didn't really think of, like, okay, so I underestimate myself and maybe what I can offer and, you know, my, and different things that I know of. And there's a call that I got out of nowhere and was like, hey, can you do this for me? And I thought about it, I'm like, yeah, I can do that. And I didn't think, you know, something that was a need for people, so it got my mind thinking, you know, racing about something. And, you know, he was like, how much would you charge? And I just said something out, you know, out loud. And then after I said, I'm like... Well, I really un undercut myself on that one, <laughs> you know, because it was just the fact that somebody just wanted it. And so I was like, oh, okay, this is somewhat free money because this is easy for, for me to do it. How can you get to the point to where you're comfortable enough to, to price yourself at a, at a higher level? And that might be, that's probably what holds a lot of people back. You know, because you're so nervous, it, you know, if it's going to be $100, but you're so nervous to say, well, it's $100 for an hour of my time versus uh, 20, you know, <laughs> you know what, how can this, you get to that? I go through this all the time, especially even with my mother, because she does business things on the side. Um, you're, you have to look at your cost. How much do you really want to get paid per hour mm -hmm. is definitely the first question. But then what are the resources that you're using? Are you using your gas? Are you using whatever materials you need? And the thing is, is that underestimating yourself is definitely a good analysis because if people were to take the time and write down all of the things that they're really good at, 
um, and think about, is this something that I would want to do for business? That would be one step. The other thing would be, what do people ask you for? What do they say you're good at? If you're good at baking and they're like, you know, I want this particular cake all the time, that cake has a cost. What are the ingredients? And then how much do you want to in order to make it? Uh, so those are things to think about. And I mean, I know that's a simple example, but everybody, in my opinion, has skills to do something. And you should by now, even let's say, even if you were 18, you know, you have some knowledge and some expertise at something. Right. And it's something that somebody else doesn't know. And there is a cost for that. So, you know, once you figure it out, you can look at the competition, see what they're charging. Uh, you could charge less, you could charge the same thing. But one thing that I've noticed is if you raise your prices, you change your clientele. Every time that you raise your prices, it's somebody that's, oh, that's too much money. Um, okay, then you're not my client anymore, right? <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Um, but then you have people, it is amazing. It, the best feeling is to say, um, it's going to be X, Y, Z per hour. And they're like, okay, that's no problem. That right there, yeah. that's one of the best feelings. Because then you know somebody values you um, at the rate that you want. You know you're getting what you asked for. And then you should know that you'll be able to deliver. That is a great feeling. And being able to set that rate and know that this is what you're worth, it makes a big difference. Yeah, that's awesome. It's, and also, just realizing and touching on part of what you said earlier, and based off of my example, is, uh, you know, over the last couple of weeks, I've had different requests for different things, and I'm starting to realize now, like, oh, wow, this could be something, you know, because I'm the type of person, I'm the person who needs to go to this event, who's been struggling on, you know, what should I do? Like, I know I want to do this, but what should I do with it? And, you know, those are my answers. So, you know, just like Chisa said, if people are saying, like, you bake this cake really well, you might need to bake that cake a thousand times <laughs> and put that out there on the market. Um, let's talk about maybe, you know, just marketing a little bit. What are some of the uh, best marketing practices you've seen some people use, Darlinda? Well, right now it's social media mm -hmm. because it's low cost, no cost for small businesses to get started and start getting their image, their brand, and their products and services out there. Um, Media releases is another way. If uh, We have in the past had classes on how to create your media releases okay. and get your name out there and hope that somebody picks it up at some point. Um, but those are probably the best marketing practices for small business right now. But knowing your social media is the other one. Not every social media is appropriate for every business. Do you have a product or a service? Where is your customers? If you don't do your market research, you don't know who your customers are. So you've got to know who your customers are and where they're at. Uh, Chisa, talk about that. Which social media, social media uh, outlets do you use and why do you use them? And then maybe how can somebody choose? Because you have, you have so much Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you know, and, and it may take too much time if you want to do everything, but you can choose maybe the best two or three or four, you know, what are what are your ideas on that? Well, I definitely think I'm, I'm probably one of those people that's kind of social media on steroids because I try to use everything, and I use everything every day, and I use it consistently. Mm -hmm. But you have people who don't have time. So what I usually do with people is I say, what do you like the best? Out of whichever one you like the best, then let's kind of focus on that one and then go from there. But the thing is, you can have it all, but if you don't use it, it's not going to do you any good. Right. Um, I can say just this year, let's go with, with um, you know, this year in particular, my biggest thing that has jumped for me has been Twitter. And that's because I changed my strategy for what I wanted to do. And so it made it a lot easier for me to, that was one of the things that helped me to get some of those contracts was that other people saw, okay, you're out there and you're consistently doing something. But I think the biggest thing that I could say is people are sometimes scared to toot their own horn or to let people know what they're doing. And that's probably one of the biggest issues. Um, like she mentioned with press releases, you have to tell people what you're doing. Like there should be something that you can tell people about at least once a month. I mean, right. if not more than that, if you're in business. Right. There's something that you're doing that's great. There's some client that you have. There is some new something that's going on in your business, something that you're opening, something that you're changing. And so there should be an opportunity for you to let somebody know that. So telling people what you do makes a big difference. And I think that for me, that's been um, one of the things that's been a catalyst. Now. 
people need to change their strategy going into 2015 because uh, if you've paid attention to Facebook and if you've had a Facebook fan page, they've changed their whole algorithm where they really want you to pay for advertisement. So people are not organically just seeing your posts. Mm. If they're not Talk paying attention to your page on a consistent basis, then they're not going to see those posts. Um, but I still recommend people getting a Facebook fan page because if you don't have the money for a website, all of the content you would put on a website is on a Facebook fan page. Yeah, it's, it's so disheartening uh, for me personally when um, <laughs> my Facebook fan page and I see that maybe two people, this, this post was reached two people. Like, what? Yeah. There's like 800 people or 700 <laughs> some people that like this page and you can only reach two. But, you know, and I spend a little bit of money and, and people uh, get reached through that way. Um, you, you touched on something there with press releases. And maybe this is another idea for me. I'm coming up with all these ideas just because <laughs> you guys are here. Yay. But That's what um, there are people who will contact me and say, hey, how can I get this on radio? How can I get this on television? And then, you know, I'll say, yeah, send a press release here at this place and, you know, somebody will see it from there. And then I'll see this, you know, pretty poorly written, uh, you know, <laughs> email, not a press release or a news release. Will they learn how to do that here as well? Is there something there to help, help people out? Um, we do not have a specific program at the summit for press releases, but that is something we'll probably have at some point during the spring sessions. All right, sorry, I had to take that call really quick, but thank you for, for answering that. But yeah, that's something that, uh, that you know, people really uh, do need to know. Uh, all right, so this Small Business Summit, we didn't talk about the location of this, because uh, you know, people may be thinking Jamestown. This it, is not Jamestown. No, it is at our brand new Cameron campus out okay. on Highway 68 in Colfax. Yes. We are so excited to have it there because it's an actual business conference center as well as a campus. And I have breakout rooms, beautiful auditorium. Wonderful it's be technology. Wonderful. That's Great another technology. thing. The technology is amazing. All of the screens come out of the ceiling. And <laughs> the projectors are there already. You're not like putting a projector yeah. up and carrying it from room to room and there's humongous TV screens all over the place. So it is definitely um, it's definitely like a step up for real. I mean, and not only is that campus great for this summit, but if people are thinking about other business events and conferences, it's yeah. an amazing facility and it's just, you know, a hop, skip and a jump from Greensboro. About 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah, I need to uh, stop by. I remember um, driving past there and seeing um, all the all of the uh, construction going on over there. So now it's finished, and it looks like a looks like it's going to be a pretty nice place. So this is uh, on Leeborn Road, right? Correct. Cool. And this is okay. So they this is where they were doing a lot of traffic. Uh, you know, so that that turning lane and everything that's already finished, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I, I, there is a left turn lane. I, I, uh, that's what I do on Monday through Friday, so I, I haven't been able to go by there to see it, but okay, cool, that turn lane is, uh, is there. So, uh, one of the things that makes me excited about this, and, you know, it's, it's the Small Business Summit on January 9th, but then you mentioned earlier, 11 months out of the year, um, is this January through November? November. Correct. Talk about uh, more of those. Uh, let's just get a little bit more in depth on, on some of those particular programs. Is, is this something where you sign up for something that lasts for a month, or does it last for a couple? Like, what? What is? It, how does someone get involved in this? Well, you can go to the gtcc.edu forward slash sbc, click on um, classes and registration, and that will take you to a full list of all the programs we have available. 